This video discusses the procedure for the acids and bases experiment for general chemistry at Madison College. For the first part of this experiment, you're going to be classifying the properties of six different solutions. To do this, you want to obtain a 24 well plate in the front of the lab room, and you want to wash that thoroughly with soap water and do a final rinse with deionized water. Once you have your clean microwell plate, you want to position it on a white piece of paper horizontally, and that will give you six columns and four rows, like you can see here. You want to label the columns with the six different solutions that you're going to be testing. The specific solutions are listed in the procedure for the lab, and you can also see my labels that I have here. The next thing you want to do is you want to fill row one two-thirds of the way full with each solution. Now you're ready to do your first test for part A and the first test that you're going to do is testing conductivity. You're going to be using the conductivity tester that you used in the solutions lab so it should look familiar to you. What you're going to do is dip the electrodes of the conductivity tester in each solution and what you're going to be looking for is the red and green lights at the top of the conductivity tester. You're going to interpret the relative conductivity of each solution using that laminated chart that goes along with the conductivity tester. It's important that you rinse the electrodes between each test. So as you go from one solution to the next, you need to rinse the electrodes with deionized water and then wipe them off with a paper towel. And this is important to prevent contamination as you're doing your conductivity testing. The next test that you're going to do is using phenolphthalein. And phenolphthalein is a clear colorless solution and you can see that it'll be in glass vials in the lab that look like this. You want to add one drop of phenolphthalein to each solution in row one and record the color response. What you can expect with phenolphthalein is that it'll turn pink if you have a basic solution and it stays colorless if you have acidic or neutral solution. The next test that you're going to be doing is a litmus test and for this you want to get three strips of litmus paper and you want to arrange them on a paper towel like I have here. Instead of dipping the litmus paper into each solution, for this test we want to put drops of the solutions on the litmus paper. You only need three strips of litmus paper because you can test two solutions by putting a drop on each end of one piece of litmus paper. To interpret your results from the litmus test, if the paper turns pink, that means the solution is acidic. If the paper turns blue, that means the solution is basic. And if it stays purple, that would indicate a neutral solution. When you're all done with your litmus test and you've recorded that color response, you can throw away the used strips of litmus paper in the regular trash. The next test that you're going to be doing is really similar to the litmus test, but for this you're going to be using pH test paper. It comes in a small vial and the paper itself is a light orange color to begin with. You want to arrange three strips of pH test paper on a paper towel and you want to test your six different solutions by adding a drop of each solution onto the pH test paper. To interpret the pH of the solution you want to compare the color of your test paper to the color chart that's on the side of the bottle. You'll notice with that color chart that you have all the colors of the rainbow there and a very strong acid would be red and at the other end of the range a strong base would be a blue color for that pH test paper. The next test that you're going to be doing is using universal indicator. For this you want to fill row 2 on your test plate two-thirds of the way full with solutions 1 through 6. You want to add one drop of universal indicator to each well in row 2 on your plate. You're going to get a really colorful response with the universal indicator 
And the color chart for that is similar to that of the pH paper in that you have a rainbow with a strong acid being on the red end of it and strong bases being blue and purple. You want to record the color of each solution for row two. The next test that you're going to be doing is reaction with magnesium metal. For this test, you want to fill the third row on your test plate, two-thirds of the way full, with each solution. Then you want to add one strip of magnesium metal to each well in row three. The magnesium metal will be in a plastic container in the lab, and you can use your tweezers to add it to the wells on your plate. So you'll need a total of six strips of magnesium metal. You want to write down your observations of any apparent reaction. And when you're done with this test, you're all done with your test for part A for the reaction, and you can clean up your microwell plate. You don't, there might be pieces of magnesium that are unreacted at the end of the reaction, and we don't want those to go down the drain. There'll be a metal waste container in the lab. So filter out any magnesium strips that are left over at the end of the experiment and put them in this metal waste container. The solutions you can wash down the drain in the lab. Wash the plate with soap and water and then return it to the bin in the front of the room. In the next part of the experiment, you're going to be doing four different neutralization reactions. And for this, you want to label four large test tubes with the following labels. What you'll notice here with this list of four neutralization reactions is I have the different acids that I'm going to be testing. A neutralization reaction is a reaction between an acid and a base, and the acids that you're going to be looking at here are hydrochloric acid and acetic acid at different concentrations. We want to be semi-quantitative with these neutralization reactions, and to do that we're going to be counting drops. What you want to do is get 20 drops of each acid and put that in your labeled test tubes. With the exception of the fourth test tube that's labeled 0.1 molar HCl plus water, in that test tube you're going to have a total of 40 drops because you're going to get 20 drops of the hydrochloric acid plus 20 drops of deionized water. To measure these drops and to be quantitative, I suggest that you use those plastic disposable pipettes that are in the back of the lab room. And the reason why I suggest using those pipettes is that the tip is very narrow and this will help you get uniform drops when you're counting a total of 20 drops for each solution. Once you've added your acid to all of the test tubes, the next thing that you want to do is add one drop of phenolphthalein to each test tube. The phenolphthalein, um, remember, is an indicator. It turns pink if you have a basic solution and it stays colorless if it's acidic or neutral. When you add that one drop of phenolphthalein to your acids, you won't see any response or you won't see any change. You need the phenolphthalein though because that's going to indicate when you've neutralized your solutions. Next you need to add your base and the base that you're going to be using is 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide and you want to count out the drops for this. So to count drops with the base, again I suggest using another disposable pipette um, so that you get those small uniform drops. You want to be really careful as you're adding the drops of base. You need to swirl the test tube to mix it after you add each drop of base. And the way I suggest doing this is working together with your partner. Have one person be adding drops and counting drops of base while the other person holds the test tube and swirls it um, after the addition of each drop. And this will ensure that you're mixing after you add each drop. Um, you want to keep adding drops of sodium hydroxide until you see a permanent color change. The color change that you're looking for is when the solution turns pink, which would indicate the end of your neutralization reaction. As you start to approach that end point, you might notice that the solution turns pink after you add a drop, but once you swirl it, 
that color goes away and it goes back to being colorless. And that's what we mean by a permanent color change. It's going to be one where it turns, stays pink even after you mix the test tube. You're going to repeat this procedure for your four neutralization reactions. You want to count the number of drops of sodium hydroxide that you add and record that number in your data table for part B. This is going to be the end of your procedure. At this point in time, you can pour your solutions and your in your test tubes for part B down the drain and lab and wash your test tubes like you normally do. This is the end of the procedure and I hope this video helps you prepare for lab.